Hey, we will start this one. Theories about the universe. Advancements in quantum mechanical theories and new technologies that allow us to better perceive our universe and understand the answers to questions we never believe possible to answer seem to be developing every single day as research scientists work to provide us with new insights and revelations to our universe that break the boundaries of what we ever thought was possible. These findings will often spawn new theories and enlightenments that will cause even the most stoic of people the need to sit back and collect their thoughts in order to come to terms with theories that are so mind-blowing they are often groundbreaking in their own right. So today, we will be visiting five theories about our very own universe that will absolutely blow your mind. Unrelated to the subject, but I really like this type of nondescript British accent narrating. It's so soothing. I just want to sip some tea in bed while he reads me a story. We exist inside a black hole. The Big Bang has been a scientific discovery that has led countless physicists and research scientists scratching their heads since its first appearance. When scientists pointed their sensitive measuring devices towards the sky and picked up on the large quantities of background radiation of the universe that helped to paint an enlightening picture as to the original moments in time that our universe began, more questions began popping into their heads than could be answered. The most significant question seemed to be the most recursive. If the Big Bang created the universe, then what created the Big Bang? This was a question that would go unanswered for many decades, and many others attempting to abandon the thought altogether. I ask myself these sorts of questions sometimes, especially that one. And sometimes I do want to know, but then other times I think that knowing would almost take away some of the fun that being a human comes with. Some of the best philosophical writings or ideas come from not knowing in my opinion. So I could definitely live the rest of my life not knowing. Well, I do live my life not knowing. Definitively, we all do. So I guess we're already doing it. How can we see what happened before anything ever even happened? This thought would soon change after mathematicians would make a strange comparison between the Big Bang and an unlikely celestial body that was still regarded as nothing more than theory. Yeah. Black holes. Now, the theory behind black holes was more than just shrouded in mystery, and it was not until a man by the recognizable name of Albert Einstein helped humanity to realize that space and time are interwoven and connected in something we refer to as the fabric of space time. Interestingly enough, the mathematical theory of mass then being able to stretch and distort this fabric similar to that of a rock resting on a cloth led to an innovative idea relative to the limits of this distortion. It was in the math that scientists believed that if the mass of an object grew to a certain size, this would cause the fabric of space-time to stretch and the mass, although finite, to be compressed into a zero-dimensional point with no volume, creating a singularity or, as we commonly refer to as, a black hole with a gravitational force so great that light itself could not escape it. Of course, initially, many scientists believed that an infinite density was impossible and that such an occurrence in the math was an obvious flaw that worked to prove the illegitimacy of general relativity and that black holes could not possibly exist. Neil deGrasse Tyson on his YouTube channel Star Talk has a really fun video explaining the space-time continuum. I like his co-host a lot, Chuck. I don't know Chuck's last name, but I'll find that video for you and link it if you're interested. Of course, this would come to change in time as better technology has allowed us to observe the effects of gravitational distortion and the large, supermassive black hole located at the centre of our galaxy. Muse. But an interesting comparison was made between the nature of black holes and the nature of the Big Bang in the meantime. It became obvious to quantum physicists that the math completely added up that the Big Bang appeared to be the inverse perspective of the black hole. 
leading many physicists to believe that the creation of our universe very well could have been the creation of a black hole, and that existence and the stretching of space-time as we know, in reference to the expansion of our universe, could merely be us existing inside of a singularity. Oh. Could it be possible then that we are merely a product of an outside aging universe and that the original creation of our universe was from this event? Further evidence is provided when plotting out the fourth dimensional graphing of the timeline of our universe that shows a growing expanse from a singularity stretching out similar to an infinite density could stretch the fabric of space-time, leading many more scientists to find this theory to be a legitimate answer to the question of the Big Bang. I hadn't heard that one before. An infinite loop. Oh, this one, yeah. The world of infinites in mathematics have led to a tremendous amount of insights when discussing aspects of conceptual math. None more so than the advancements made by George Cantor and fellow great mathematicians. This had, however, led to many complications in the world of real-world applications relative to the concept of infinites. A sphere, in this regard, could be considered an object with infinite points on its surface, and when the math is worked out correctly, one could, in perfect mathematical theory, create two perfect spheres with the same mass, size, and density of the original sphere. I have this irrational fear, or maybe not fear is the word, but I definitely give it more thought than is necessary, of getting caught in one of those infinite time loops. But ridiculously, and which kind of makes it annoying that I think about it, is I get caught in the Hollywood version in my mind, like uh, Groundhog Day, living the same day in perpetuality forever. I know that's not likely. It's like uh, being afraid of sharks in the pool. This is referred to as the banach tarsi paradox. And though many scientists had initially regarded the concepts of this application as impossible in the real world, the math was right. It was not until many decades later that numerous researchers had begun noticing strange theories coming to light. The CERN Institute, during its testing of particle collisions and subatomic particles breaking down, began noticing a creation of more particles than initially started with. In fact, a paper had recently been published believing that not only was the banach tarski paradox applicable in the real world, but that many of the calculation errors and research at CERN helped to prove that this phenomenon was already naturally occurring. If this research is correct, it could mean that the traditionally held theories of the laws of conservation of energy could be entirely incorrect, and that new particles could be cloned from existing particles naturally. This, alongside the existing mind-blowing theory that we exist inside a black hole, could very well mean that every time a new black hole is created, a universe in perfect copy of our own could be created as well. This could very well mean that we are stuck in what appears to be an infinite loop as the universe forms and dies. This is one of the interesting things about science for me. And then I guess it could apply to other fields as well. That you could have a group of equally educated people who have very opposing views. I was watching the Lex Friedman podcast. We used to watch that on this channel. Uh, last week, he had a guest who was a lawyer in the past. And this lawyer had conducted, along with their firm, somewhere around 500 different lawsuits, a lot of them pertaining to scientific controversies. And he was explaining in one of them that there was a Yale scientist, a, I think, Stanford scientist, and a Harvard scientist on one side arguing one thing. And then on the other side, there was a Yale scientist, a Stanford scientist, and a Harvard scientist arguing exactly the opposite thing. And I feel like we see that on different scales, a smaller scale in comment sections, where you could have someone who believes something and then they fight from that opinion and aren't necessarily open to any other sort of opinion. And then you can have an equally thoughtful individual on the other side who wholeheartedly disagrees with them. A lot of the, the theories, I mean, there's only been, what, one, two, three so far that he explained, like, they can't be disproved. 
And in our lifetime, they probably won't be proved. So we're just going to likely die without knowing. So I just kind of see them as just fun thought experiments to think about, because I don't know. Countless times and falls into a black hole and restarts all over again. Of course, since the very laws of the universe are unchanging, this would mean that all of the factors relative to creation would stay the same and ultimately create a universe that would play out exactly as our own. Could it be that you have seen this very video over a trillion times already? Regarding new theories, it could very well be possible. Okay. Multiverse theory. One startling revelation made by quantum physicists that has converted even the most optimistic individuals into nihilists is the concept of the multiverse theory. When pondering the mathematical implications and probability of a universe forming as well as other theories in regard to dimensional mathematics, physicists began positing a thought experiment forward. Why did our universe form with these specific rules? With these specific numbers and laws of mathematics, scientists believe that the odds of this occurring are so astronomical that it is far from probable that every variation of every possible universe exists to allow such occurrences. What is even more interesting is that researchers believe they have evidence of the multiverse theory occurring in the natural world given the complete probabilistic determination of quantum mechanics and its properties such as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and the formation of virtual particles. This could very well mean that every possible variation of every universe and every decision ever made could more than exist and could potentially one day be explored. That would be in my Philosophically, this idea could lead to newer outlooks of nihilism and absurdism that may lead people to discuss the meaningful implications of decisions if every possible decision exists infinitely throughout the multiverse. This is just going to be a video where I add supplement videos because Sean Carroll, he's a theoretical physicist. If that's the incorrect title, I'll, I'll write the correct title. I think he's a theoretical physicist. He was on the Big Think YouTube channel, which is a really good channel. And he was explaining multiverses, multiple worlds theory, and how Hollywood gets it wrong. And I was led to that video because I wanted to see if Rick and Morty, that TV show, depicted multiverses scientifically or not. Uh, I'll link you that video. He talks about Rick and Morty too. Making nothing unique meaningful or even significant in any possible way. Last Thursdayism. Oh, I like Continuing this, this idea in regards to a thought experiment put forth originally as a joke, but now proven to be a legitimate point of debate, Last Thursdayism explores further the absurdist crisis in regards to the multiverse theory and its mathematics. It states that everything that currently exists in the universe and that the universe itself was merely created last Thursday. One could attempt to argue that there is inherent proof of time existing before this point and that the universe has indeed been around a lot longer than that, but any evidence provided is not objective proof and is rather subjective interpretation. If you have a video recording of a time before last Thursday, one could argue that the device, the data and everything merely popped into existence to give the illusion of the universe having been around much longer than it actually has. That's this could crazy. be a counter-argument for any point raised against the philosophies of last Thursdayism, which could include video evidence, sensitive measuring equipment, natural phenomenon, occurring actions and even your own memories. What is all the more mind-blowing about this theory is that it mathematically works. Given the concepts provided in the multiverse theory of every universe of every possible variation popping into existence, it could very well be the case that our instance of space and time was merely created last Thursday, and any other evidence to argue against the fact could merely have been popped into existence as well. This concept ultimately argues that only the here and now is real, and that only you could ever know that you exist. This ultimately begs the question, is anything we have ever experienced actually real or the product of a universe that just popped into existence last Thursday? Enter solipsism. Given the mind-blowing theories 
we are quite certain that your mind is teeming with questions when it comes to the nature of ourselves and our universe. Be sure to share your answers and questions below in the comment section and let us know what is racing through your mind. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to stick around to help grow our community and help us to work to solve these unexplained mysteries. Nice. I'm usually really skeptical about the videos with will blow your mind in the title, but this one was good. I will definitely keep thinking about it. Especially last Thursdayism, because it always trips me up. It's something like reading a Camus novel. You think deeply about it and you realize, okay, yeah, that's absurd. But then you think deeper and somehow it makes sense. So leave your thoughts on any of the theories that he explained down below. And I, during this whole thing was resisting the urge to not say that the answer was the number 42. So for a literary recommendation, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the author is, I always do this with the authors actually, Douglas, his name is Douglas. I will write his last name right here. And although it's not my favorite genre of book, it's a well-written satirical novel. It's very much on subject because it attempts to ask and answer these questions of the universe and why and what is the meaning of everything and life. So if you've read it or watched the film, leave your thoughts down below. I should probably watch the film one day. Yeah. Other than that, that's really all from me. So leave your thoughts on any of it. If you know any, oh, excuse me, I didn't say the name of this channel. They're called Unexplained Mysteries. This is my first video, uh, the first video I've seen from them. So if you have any others you want to recommend, let me know the title down in the comments. And now that's it. So yes, leave your thoughts. Thank you for watching with me. I'll see you next time.